Hello and welcome to The Imaging Wire Show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm Managing Editor of The Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our guest is Jordan Bazinski. He is CEO of Intellirad, and he's going to be giving us, giving us an update on the company and how it's addressing some of the major challenges in radiology today. Jordan, thanks for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Brian, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I love this show, and so it's a real honor to be able to speak with you today. Um, I have been with Intellab for the last year, and it has been a phenomenal entree to this space within the healthcare domain. I've been doing healthcare technology for the last 25 years, alternating back and forth between payer-focused and provider-focused. And I have to tell you that being in this piece of the world in medical imaging is so fulfilling. We have such an important mission, and to be part of the Intellab team driving that mission forward every day means a lot to me. So it's been a great start to... Uh, to what I imagine to be a very long tenure within the medical imaging space. All right, very good. And, and you've also got some some personal ties in healthcare, don't you? I do, I do. So I've got a son that has hemophilia. It's an inherited bleeding disorder. And he has, for many years, had a port in, certainly in his chest. And uh, obviously, to get port insertion correct, you've got to have some good medical imaging there, especially with pediatrics. And so it, as a parent, of course, is very personal and you take your professional hat off and you're just worried about your child and how they're doing. And it's only after the fact that you can look at that image and then make that connection between what you do every single day and what's happening in your own house. And so very pleased to report he's been doing phenomenally well for many years, but we are personally indebted to medical imaging in our household. The, you know, the amazing thing, I've been in medical imaging for a long time and, and it's really been gratifying to see the advances that that have been made in our specialty and and really how it's um you know improving care for for people that that we know and love so um, I'm I'm really glad to hear that absolutely so in Telerad you're you're a major player in the world of medical imaging we've seen the company go through quite a few acquisitions in the last few years can you talk about how some of those acquisitions have shaped in Telerad today and 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 where the company's headed next sure so in Telerad's heritage was as a pack system. Yeah, that serves in many ways as the nucleus for any enterprise imaging system, but it's not sufficient in this day and age. In 2024, we've seen that the notion of enterprise medical imaging has shifted pretty dramatically. And so for us, this last several years of both organic build within our platform, as well as acquisitions, was all predicated on the idea that what our clients need in the future is materially different than what they needed in the past. And so for us, that meant how do we include workless orchestration as a critical component of the suite? How do we make sure that archiving the image is center and deeply tied to the PAC system? How do we make sure that we have image exchange part and parcel of everything else that we do? How do we expand beyond the radiologist to start including the cardiologists in their workflows? So all of those acquisitions over the last few years were very much with an eye towards what is the future enterprise imaging suite? What does that need to entail? How do we be sure that we at Intellirad are leading the way towards that? So that's a lot of what these last few years meant for us. And as we look forward into our future, it will continue to be with that question of what do our customers need at the forefront? And how do we blaze the trail for the next wave of enterprise imaging? Now, one of the um, the big things, obviously, that's been happening over the last few years has been the rise of artificial intelligence. And as as a company that's that's rooted primarily in image management, how is Intellirad leveraging AI and how are you, you know, working it into the, the workflows that you offer to your customers? Such a good question because lifting up for a moment from Intellirad specifically, just thinking more broadly, how people access and interact with information is radically changing. Human like AI powered systems are fundamentally shifting how we synthesize vast amounts of information and then provide answers relative to the questions we have about that information. And so the challenge of technology not understanding us and our intent is really evaporating right before our eyes. And that's what I always have in the back of my mind when I think about artificial intelligence and how we use that at Intellirad. So for us, we already use AI quite a bit, both within our internal operations as well as in the products that we sell to the marketplace. So internally, when we develop code, that's buttressed by AI. Our customer support team uses AI engines to help them get better, faster answers for our clients. 
in the product set itself, we're using AI to run the workload orchestration, streamline the workflow, ensure that we're triaging the right study to the right clinician at the right time. And we're also using AI to help identify anomalies within a study so that we can provide better quality of care. So for us, AI is pretty embedded within every single thing we do. Now, that being said, one of the areas that I think AI has lagged a bit and where there's a real opportunity for us as an industry is that today, much of the artificial intelligence causes the clinician to come out of their workflow. And so a radiologist who's looking at a study is having to click into other pop-up windows, and we're needing to streamline that, make that a more seamless experience so that the physician who's actually going through the study doesn't need to think about clicking other boxes. The computer is just helping orient them towards where they need to be spending their, their time and energy in any moment. So for us, that's really the next horizon of AI, how to embed it more seamlessly within the workflow. But for us, it's really been part and parcel of our work over the last several years, and we're really proud of how far we've come in embedding AI into what we do every day. Do you think that Intellirad has maybe a little bit of an edge over a, like a dedicated AI developer because you guys are so um, embedded with image management and, and the highlight on management, you know, you, you guys are... Um, you're offering products that are trying to improve radiologist workflow, workflow, as opposed to maybe a point solution that just analyzes an image. So maybe you're coming at AI from a slightly different angle than a company that's developing like a dedicated AI algorithm. It's a really interesting observation, Brian. And for us, Ed and we, by the way, have tremendous respect and appreciation for the dedicated AI vendors in the marketplace right now. There are so many doing really interesting cutting edge things. And we're really proud to be able to partner with quite a few of them to bring those innovations into our clients' workflow every day. But for us, we tend to think that the most critical part of the AI is the underlying data and the way in which the doctor can access that and take advantage of it. So for us, we're looking at hundreds of millions of studies annually. That bolus of data provides a really good spine for how we think about AI and leverage AI. And then similarly, it's one thing to have an interesting algorithm. It's quite enough for it to be present at the right moment for the doctor to do something with it. And so for us, we tend to think of that workflow in embedding within the ecosystem of what the physician is doing every day as the real gold standard of what's going to matter to them, not necessarily the algorithm itself. In fact, in some ways, I tend to think that a number of these algorithms in the next few years might become a bit commoditized. Similar training data sets, similar mathematical models. And so it's less about, do I have the best widget? Do I have an R squared value that's a fraction of a percent higher than the next person? Rather it's, can I take a really good valuable model and embed that at the right time, at the right place with the right patient physician combination to get really good quality of care outcomes? So we talked a little bit earlier about innovation in radiology and how much radiology has, has, has always been innovating, you know, almost since it was in, invented. Uh, or the, since the X-ray was discovered, what's what's the the thinking behind product innovation at Intellirad, and, and and what sort of clinical challenges are are you trying to solve for healthcare providers? Well, certainly one of the biggest challenges we're trying to solve for is the sheer gap between supply and demand of clinicians versus how much is needed of those individuals. And you hear time and again about physician burnout, about the gap and shortage of radiologists and other providers of care, one of the, the hallmarks of the work we do at Intellirad is trying to bridge that gap. And our philosophy is that with really good technology, we can create virtual capacity that can help solve for some of that. Now, we can't create more doctors. We're not a teaching facility. We can't put more of those individuals out in the world. But what we can do is make them highly efficient, serve up the best possible information at the right time and help them manage as many patients as possible with very high efficacy rate. For us, that's really our calling. And we believe that in doing that, we can reduce as much as possible the gap between how many clinicians are out in the world and how many are needed. So that's a bit of the clinical challenge that we see ourselves trying to identify and solve for, in addition, of course, to identifying specific anomalies within any given case that can provide better care to an individual. For us, that's really important. Then when we think about innovation into the future, we think about what are we doing in the cloud? What are we doing at AI? And how do we think about enterprise imaging writ large? So in the cloud, this is all about ensuring that 
as much of our stack as possible is available in the cloud. That provides you bitless access, easier and more streamlined implementations, elastic compute power and storage, all the things that are really important to a provider of care as they're trying to access images, do reads against images, and share that with other providers. On the AI side, as we talked about, how do we speed up the workflow? And then of course, on the enterprise imaging, how do we expand selectively into other ologies to make sure that we're providing as much as possible to different flavors of care across the hospital acute care system, as well as the outpatient radiology market. Now, one of the things that, that IntelliRad has always kind of uh, focused on has been uh, issues like um, access to care, inequities, uh, care accessibility, and that sort of thing. Um, and so, what what what's been IntelliRad's focus in 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 that area? You know, addressing health outcome disparities between genders, between races, and that sort of thing. Ryan, one of the most interesting statistics that I come across is that 47% of the world's population has no access to medical imaging. Think about that. Half of the world has no access to the type of diagnostic care that you and I take for granted. And so if we were going to put a stake in the ground somewhere and say, let's solve for this, that's certainly one of them. But even here close to home, I'm in the United States and we have customers around the world. But when I think about what's happening right here, we have clear gaps in how care is delivered and the types of outcomes we achieve based on any of a number of varieties of factors about an individual or their care team. So we know, for example, that white Americans have about six years on average more life expectancy than black Americans. We know that if your provider of care, if your doctor is of similar ethnicity to you, you're likely to get more time with that individual. They're going to ask you deeper questions and you've got better chance of getting the diagnosis that's going to help you achieve a better quality outcome over the long run. These are all things that have been studied fairly frequently. We know them to be true. So in Intellirad, what we're attempting to do is bring about all of the needed diagnostic tools so that those care teams can provide the best quality care to the individual that needs it when they need it. We worry that absent that, a lot of these trends that we've seen in the past will certainly continue into the future. But by putting really good diagnostic imagery and information in front of the care team, we have a much better shot at overcoming some of these historical barriers that could be rooted in ethnicity, it could be rooted in socioeconomic status, it could be rooted in geography, and we're helping democratize a lot of those variables to make sure everyone's getting the quality care that they deserve. Drill into a little bit more into provider diversity. Um, you sure. know, how can what, what can we do to get more uh, radiologists, uh, you know, radiology has has historically had a problem with uh, women, you know, getting into the workforce because I think something like over fifty percent of of medical students are women. Yet, when it comes to radiology, how many women are there? I think that the number is a lot lower. It's more like twenty eight, thirty percent. Um, what do, do you see? Any sort of things that that we can do to try to encourage? more diversity in, in the workforce, the healthcare workforce. There's been a lot written of late about mentorship and the role of coaching and mentorship in helping bring about more of the type of change that you're describing. And I suspect that while it sits outside of the specific four walls of an IntelliRath, our ability as an industry to have more women that are mentoring and coaching for other women to bring them into the radiology sphere will really help accelerate that number and bring it more aligned with the percent that you see in overall medical schools, as you mentioned. So that's sort of one area where we see some real focus. Another is in other flavors of medicine. We've seen a lot more uh, diversity of approach to how we teach, when we teach, and what the overall experience of being part of that subspecialty is like. Radiology is one of those areas where Perhaps we've been a bit behind the curve as far as being more thoughtful and creative about those different modalities for teaching and bringing about um, a work environment that can be more inclusive of a broader array of physicians. And so I suspect somewhere in there, there's also opportunity. And then, of course, at an IntelliRad, what we think about is ensuring that as we are working with doctors, that we are being very thoughtful of their specific needs and treating each person as the individual that they are as opposed to assuming that everyone we work with 
has come from the same training program, has the exact same experience with technology, and just innately knows how to use systems like ours. And so that's been a little bit of a learning on our side as well. I, I think one of the things that Intellirad really deserves some kudos for uh, are the, the 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 webinars that you do, um, where you partner with Rad Equal and you know Dr. Geraldine McGinty, and um, you know you guys have always got something going on to to, to address a lot of these diversity and and workforce issues, and so. I would encourage um, you know everybody out there watching to uh, you know follow Intellirad and 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 you know attend some of these webinars because this is a really important issue, as you know, not just in radiology but um, across all of healthcare. So, right, thanks for bringing that up. We're very proud of the work we've been able to support at Brad Equal. We take very little credit for that work. They're amazing people like Geraldine and others who are pushing the envelope every day. But we're a proud sponsor of their work. And we see their efforts as key to making the tips and roads we all want to see in the healthcare sphere. Yeah. So uh, another big issue uh, in healthcare and, and radiology in particular is burnout. And uh, there's been a, a number of studies that have found that um, the, the burnout rate across healthcare is skyrocketing. And the burnout rate in radiology is a little bit higher than, uh, you know, the, the specialty is a little bit higher than some of the other specialties. What's your perspective on on burnout and how do you feel like Intellirad solutions are, are helping to improve the work environment for radiologists? Word out for so many of us tends to be a combination of how hard are we working at a moment in time relative to what we'd expect, how much control we have over our day and have impact, and then ultimately that feeling of accomplishment. Within the tool set at Intellirad, we tend to work towards how do we create as much efficiency as possible for the individual so that they're not having to work an insane amount of hours in order to get through the workload that they know they need to achieve against? But also, again, when we come back to AI and workflow and the types of tools that are embedded within the overall enterprise suite, how do we let them feel a real sense of accomplishment? That they have control over that individual case and that when they're done reading on the case, they have a tremendous amount of confidence in the quality of care that they've been able to deliver back to that patient. By accomplishing those areas, we're really hopeful that we can help reduce at least some of that feeling of burnout that's plaguing the industry right now. And I, I think ultimately it, it's kind of a technology solution that we need because it's a, in radiology, at least oh. it's a technology problem that's created. I, I was I was at ECR um, a, a little bit earlier and I went to a, a, a press conference and the radiologist said, you know, 20 years ago, I, 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 someone did a CT scan and I had, you know, a small number of images, a few dozen images to look at. And now it's in the thousands. And right. the only way that you can get through a, a study with thousands of images is through some sort of technology solution. That's exactly right. And the pressure is only going to get greater. Yeah. As time passes, we will continue to see more and more. And again, when you think about aging populations, the expanded utilization of medical imaging across a broader state of diseases, we're just going to see a higher volume of care. And so technology is both the problem and the solution in this particular case. And it's a lot of how we think about our development efforts. How do we ensure that we're bringing a lot of those solutions to bear? Because at the end of the day, there's a real human who's got to get through this work. And we have to be sure that we're enabling them and not treating them like a machine, but treating them like the person they are. Right. So you're right. absolutely right. Yeah. Any other things that we can look forward to seeing from Intellirad in, in the year ahead? We've got some some trade shows coming up, and um, you know some technology that people can look at. Uh, any any things that we can expect to see from Intellirad? Absolutely. So our push into the cloud continues, and we anticipate having more and bigger things to talk about later in the year as it relates to the work we're doing in the cloud. We're really excited about that because we see that as the unlock for so many different pieces of value in the overall chain of solutions that we deliver to our clients. Additionally, on the AI front, between partnerships and how we're embedding some AI, we anticipate having some more interesting use cases for that later in the year. We also tend to think about advanced visualization and other ways of actually accessing those things. And so you'll be hearing more from us on a variety of those topics as we go through the year, and certainly by the time we hit RSNA in November. All right, very good. Well, something to look forward to. Uh, Jordan Bazinski uh, of Intellirad, thanks so much for being with us today. We really appreciate the time. Brian, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. All right. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.